There's no end to my talents. Garrick's Wormuloid. Welcome to the Briar Bothy. I... Everything's fine. Everything's fine. I was just kidding. I was just kidding. Hey everybody, Dave Thank here. Goodness. How are y'all doing tonight, tomorrow, yesterday afternoon, the second Thursday of last week? For those of you who don't understand because you are not watching on YouTube, you are listening to the podcast. I was just pretending not to be able to be heard because if you heard last week's or watched last week's video, you know that we recorded a whole episode last week or two weeks ago, and, well, <laughs> we didn't have the sound on because I'm a dork and didn't check. <laughs> but we are, we have the sound on, everything's fine, I tested it, it's all good, recorded in a short video before we started, everything's good. How are you doing tonight, Greg? Honk, honk, everybody. Doing good, doing good, just, uh, a little chilly over here, but otherwise uh, doing good. How about yourself? Well, it's been a sickening, sickening week. Sickening. I was sick. My wife was sick. All four kids of mine were sick. Everyone's getting better. It wasn't COVID. We had a couple rapid tests on hand. The kids might have had it, but we were just concerned about us. No, we're concerned about the kids, too but they don't have to leave the house. so Right, right. Just before anyone goes, oh my God, he doesn't care about his kids. We just don't think they need to go through that crap. And since it pretty much just affects our kids because they're in the age group where it's like a bad cold, we're not too worried about it. Yeah. I wouldn't be either. But, you know... I'm getting up there. I'm com I'm coming up to that. I'm getting uh, getting close to that age group where it's gonna matter soon. That I'm gonna need to know. So, I did a test, a rapid test. It was negative. Agatha did. My wife did a rapid test. It was negative. So we were pretty sure that the kids probably didn't have it. But yeah, no, it was still not a fun week though. I mean, I don't usually. When I get sick, I don't usually uh, be down for four days, four or five days. I'm still not feeling the greatest today. I was glad it was editing day so I could just sit and do easy work on the computer. But, yeah, other than that, I think not much is going on. Yeah. Uh, you know, last uh, May... Right after I got my second booster, uh, well, not booster, my second shot for uh, the COVID vaccine, uh, that's when my wife and I came down with the flu. And thankfully, we didn't uh, pass it off to our son. But man, like it, uh, it put us both out. And uh, like, I think the first night I actually had to go out to, uh, just pick up some supplies to help us get through the next few days at the grocery store, which I felt bad about uh, having to go out and stuff, but there was just no other way. Mm -hmm. And uh, like that was, it was like a Herculean effort to be able to do that. I'm sure that wasn't fun. No, um, things are pretty uneventful around here. Other than that, um, as we were talking about before we got on Mike, um, got a job interview last week. Congrats. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That might, that joke might not be right. Hold on. Let's see, we're recording here. I'll edit it here. Nope. That joke's right. Last week on Friday, 
<laughs> I had to go over the schedule to make sure I had the joke right. <clears throat> right, right. But I might have had the had the interview last week, but this Dave doesn't know how it went because I haven't had the interview yet. It's next week. Don't you just love a two week delay? <laughs> right, right. It's a the the, the suspense. I'll definitely uh, want you to let me know how it goes. Uh, oh yeah, I will certainly let you know. But yeah, it's a, it's, it's an auto detailing job, so working on 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 cars, not the mechanics, the the good looking stuff, the good looking part of it, making the cars look shiny and whatnot. Um, for an auto company here in town, hoping it'll go okay and they'll get the job because, damn, I need one. Right, and the fun thing is, it it, it it'll be a, it'll be a nice job. Like, sure, the pay is not not the greatest, but um, it'd be nine to five, no weekends. That kind of nice. makes up for it a little bit. Mm-hmm. No, those aren't uh, bad hours at all. Well, I say nine to five, but I don't know exactly. I think it's one of those things right. where it could be, it could be eight, it could be eight to five because there might be an hour lunch. I don't know. That's all stuff I'll find out last week. Which well, you guys won't get to hear about till the week after. Yeah. Maybe maybe one more. Maybe maybe March you'll find out that I got a job in February and didn't tell you about it until Febu till March. I don't know. Yeah. Figuring out the schedule on this thing is weird now since I kinda since I since I record on Friday and edit the following Friday. Does me yeah, I would I would be not be able to keep track of all of that. <laughs> No, it's confusing. It's very confusing. I'm I'm glad I don't actually try to keep track of it often. Yeah, it all, it sounds like uh one of those like um paragraph long uh, math problems. Mm. Yeah. Dave edits a podcast. He records on this day. It do, uh, blah, 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 and so on and so forth. When you finally find out when he got a job, how many weeks was it was it late? Yeah. And while you're uh, while you're doing that, which uh, again I will be uh, rooting and praying for you for that, um, I will be on my way down to St. Louis for the St. Louis Pipe Show. Right, because you all have done that last week. Mm -hmm. But nobody will know about it till two weeks from now. How it went? I know. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, if you're wondering how it went, just go ahead and get on. Uh, just wait know. for two weeks, and we'll tell you then. Yes. Or, uh, yeah, look up my social media. Yeah, follow, sure probably... follow them on social media, because there'll be pictures and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'm excited about that. Uh, since <laughs> I talked about it last time, and it was uh, lost. Uh, essentially, I, uh, I wanted to go to a pipe show, uh, St. Louis to one. Uh, our friend Dwayne on this pipe life uh, brought it up and that he was going to have a table and uh, mentioned that, uh, man, I'd love to go, but, uh, you know, driving down to St. Louis by myself, uh, I just uh, wasn't uh, thinking that it would happen <laughs> and to kind of be like, hey, honey, you mind if I dip out for uh, two or three days to go to a pipe show? I didn't think it would necessarily go because uh, like I wanted to do this one and one day I'd like to do uh, the Columbus pipe show, but uh, now the Columbus one will probably be a little bit further for me, but uh, uh, so Ohio, this one was right? a little bit, what's that? Columbus, Ohio. Yeah. Yeah. Columbus, Ohio. And that's not, uh, I, and so that one is like within, it's doable more so than like um, the shows that are in uh, Virginia and North Carolina, which I definitely would not be able to make. Um, but anyway, so I thought that wasn't uh, going 
going to happen, but I did mention that, uh, uh, you know, kind of an interest. And uh, another member on the forum, Maple Top, who is uh, one of the people that uh, runs the Chicago uh, Pipe Club and uh, the Chicago Pipe Show, mm-hmm. uh, chimed in and said that uh, if I uh, brought my bagpipes <laughs> that I was uh, and got uh, the okay, I'd be able to uh, carpool with them down. So, uh, talked it over with my wife and, uh, was able to get that, uh, all taken care of. And, uh, he, uh, Maple Top and I have, uh, chatted about it and we have a hotel room booked and, and everything. So uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to go down and check out the, uh, St. Louis pipe show. And, uh, I'm looking forward to also meeting Dwayne, uh, cause, uh, he's been, on the this pipe life zooms when i was able to do that and uh got along with him really well and uh just is a cool guy so i'm looking forward to to doing that let's change this to drive Uh, but I will be bringing my bagpipes, and uh, m- my big master plan is that uh, uh, when I play them at the show, I'm going to bring two different signs uh, and-, and put them in front of my pipe case. Uh, we'll play bagpipes for pipes and pipe tobacco. We'll and stop. Another one that yeah, and and then one that says uh, we'll stop playing for pipes and pipe tobacco. So <laughs> we'll we'll see if anyone uh, takes the takes me up on that. Oh, that's how that works. Okay. Um, no, I was just looking. Columbus is, believe it or not, not that far from me. Ah. It is, if I was to ride my bike there, it would take me 16 hours. <laughs> but by car, it's around four hours and 20 minutes. That's no different than driving to Toronto from here. Right. But what I was, I was, uh, that's if I go toll routes. Uh, if I don't go toll routes, it's how is that possible? I know there are no tolls on that part of the road. They're telling me there are tolls on part of the four hundred one, a major highway in in this area that I travel all the time, or at least I used to, to before I had a car, and there are no tolls on that part of the road. I know that for a fact. Hmm. Unless they changed it on me. I would be annoyed. But yeah, it would only take about four hours and 20 minutes for me to get f- from my house to Columbus. Ah, so now we have two possible uh, places where we can do a, a live show or something. Oh, Flint's even closer, though, because, like, Flint, like, it's in Michigan. I don't have to cross through it. Flint is closer. Yeah, it's about the distance. Uh, yeah, it's only two hours. Yeah, I think uh, I think it's more doable. And plus, I uh, yeah, I would love to. Once things open up, I'd love to figure something I, then again i know you have your uh, passport thing to figure out uh, and everything but uh, it would be fun to go to meet up there and go to paul's pipe shop just because that is uh one of those rare tobacconists that's uh mainly pipe focused it has a very long uh history behind it too so mm-hmm. It would be cool. By the way, what are you smoking tonight? Tonight I am smoking a little Missouri Meerschaum pipe, uh, one of these Ozark Mountain series, the bent one, hmm. with cherry stain and the the burn marks from my uh, carelessness with my lighters. This is one of the first pipes I bought, so of course there's some damage. And in it, I am smoking, of course, the one, the only, Frog Morton on the Bayou. Uh, 
I miss that fun. This pipe has had nothing but that put through it. And when this, when what I got left is gone, this pipe is retired. Give it to the kids to use for snowmen. No, no, no. I'm planning on, you know, putting a plaque up and putting it on a plaque or something like that and hanging it on the wall. And that will be my commemoration to McClelland and Frog Morton. A suitable uh, endeavor. It's just too bad, too, because that's a great tobacco. It was one of the ones I was introduced to early on. Uh, I'm just sad that I can't get any more. Why don't we, um, after I uh, mention what I'm smoking, why don't we uh, talk about our memories of uh, McClellan mm. and the tobaccos that we uh, enjoyed from them? I think that would be a fun little uh, tribute that we could do. Sounds good. So, what are you smoking? So, I am smoking my uh, Peterson 05 pipe, which uh, I love this pipe a lot. Uh, if I ever wanted to do like a photo shoot or something with a pipe, this would be one of the ones that I would be reaching for. It's uh, just uh, fun, full bent pipe that I just adore. And uh, uh, I only wish that the It has like uh, some cocoa kind of uh, notes to it and other things, but uh, I, I haven't had, I mean, I've had one of Cornell and Deal's uh, holiday blends before, uh, but Hearthside was a uh, one that had been around for a little bit and it was available uh, last time I did a smokingpipes.com order. And I was like, you know what, I'll, uh, I'll give one of their, the, the flake uh, holiday blends seemed interesting to me. So I figured, I'll pick her side up, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm glad I did. Like, the first time I had it, I wasn't that impressed, but I think it, uh, you know, letting it dry out a bit, because it's a bit moist. Um, yeah, that, that it dry happens out a, lot, and, a lot with some of those blends, like, especially in, in that series. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, once it had a chance to dry a bit, and uh, with the right pipe, uh, I'm, I'm happy with it. It's always great when you can have that that happen. You get the right combination of pipe and tobacco mm -hmm. and drying time. and Sometimes you just get a really unique experience every time. Right. Because, like, I, um, I do wish that I could, uh, you know, my goal always is, like, if I could find it, uh, aromatics that I just really enjoy smoking, uh, I, I want to invest in more of them just because you know it was uh smelling aromatic pipe tobacco that uh really uh drew me to pipe smoking besides the pipes themselves and uh, i want to be able to kind of uh be that they had influence and uh, draw other people to it as well <laughs> so uh that is uh that's why i enjoy it Uh, so, for those of you who could not make out any difference, I just have to bring it up because the people in the, who might be watching the video might be going, what is going on here? <laughs> I had to get up for a minute. If we were just doing podcasts, you would never know that I got up because I needed to go grab a pipe cleaner. Yeah, you, it's always uh, annoying when what you need is just uh, out of... Uh out of reach. Oh, it's more than just out of reach. It's right across the room. <laughs> <laughs> At least I didn't have to run all the way upstairs. Yeah. Well, for me, the annoying thing is when I have to run back into the house. <laughs> mm. Yeah, you got to make you got to make sure you've got everything cuz it's not, not like, "Hey, I forgot this. Oh, it's just over there. Dave, keep talking while I go get this." No, you have to go 
all the way in the house. And if I run out of things to say, there's going to be a lot of dead air. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, that's one of those occasions that we'd have to bring up the um, uh, technical difficulties uh, card. Yeah, the please stand by. I think I still have mm-hmm. that that on here somewhere. You think that's nope. what we should title nope. each episode that uh, nope. it ends up getting lost uh, due to <laughs> mishaps? I entitled this that this latest one "Revenge of the Audio." The Book of Muting. No, no, The Mandalorian Chronicles. Oh wait, no, that's that's what we have now. It's the Mandalorian mm-hmm. Chronicles. Oh yeah. Hmm. Well, as much as I, I'd yeah. like to, I'd like to talk about memories of McClelland, I st- still just have a lot of McClelland, so it's not really in the mm-hmm. memory just yet. Well, I mean, it's, uh, and if you have a different topic, that that's perfectly fine, but, uh, I just don't know what I'd say, because I, I can't speak fondly of something that I'm still, in remembrance of something that I'm, I'm still smoking, that's, it's a little hard to do. Right. I, well, I do have, uh, one tin left of, uh, uh, plain frog Morton that, uh, uh, my friend uh, Mango Times was uh, kind enough to uh, send to me for uh, in celebration of the coming of my son, uh, which I am eternally grateful for and uh, thankful for. And uh, yeah, all well, that and uh, tin of uh, Nightcap, which uh, I am nightcap. excited to try eventually. Um, I have a tin of early you know, morning pipe here. I mean, I got, I've got, the, I've got its sister tobacco, but I don't have any nightcap. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the nightcap was one of those uh, ones that I always wanted to try. And we were, uh, I, I'm really glad that uh, Peterson bought the oh, Dunhill blends because uh, that man, because I think that was like around the same time too that McClellan went away. Um. You know, like when I first got into the hobby, and uh, even before then, because I was reading pipe forums, like probably a year or two before uh, I actually started smoking a pipe. Well, technically longer than that, but uh, mm-hmm. you know, regularly. Um, and I knew that uh, you know Dunhill blends were very popular, but because of some dis- distribution issues they were having at the time, the uh, the blends were constantly like they were on um, esoterica levels of uh, yeah. uh, availability. And uh, so I was, uh, although I wonder if Royal Yacht was uh, <laughs> difficult to find too. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, you know, once I got into the hobby, it was a little like a year or two later. Uh, I think around 2014 that uh, they became more available again, and uh, and then I think the same year that McClellan went away was when uh, it was like shortly after Dunhill announced that they were going to stop producing pipe tobacco. Yeah, it was and, really close within a year. Anyway, I don't, yeah, I don't yeah. think it was the same time, but within a year. So so that was uh, fairly devastating, and if we had lost both of them. Like uh, I mean, I'm I'm thankful that like places like Sutliff, uh, go out of their way to make uh, match blends. Yeah, even even uh, though they they don't match at all. <laughs> um, or inspired by, it. but uh, I'm I'm glad that uh, Peterson was able to to pick those up and continue them because otherwise I never would have been able to try. Uh, Let's see, 965. Uh, I did pick up 965 when it looked like, because uh, it was after they announced that they were going out of business, that, uh, well, stopping uh, pipe tobacco mm-hmm. production. 
And I was like, uh, you know what? Uh, I would hate it if I never had the chance to try a Dunhill blend. And so I figured I'd go with 965 and uh, I was happy with it. I, I really enjoyed it. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I ended up buying two tins of it, which one of them went to our uh, mutual friend, uh, um, uh, Nate Rose, uh, for my pipe commission. But uh, I, I'm glad that I was able to pick up, uh, that I've been able to, that I have the ability to pick up more than just uh, those blunts now. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'm hoping that my long, long drought of no pipe tobacco purchases, which has gone on for a year now, I haven't bought a single smidge of pipe tobacco. I'm hoping that this job comes through and I'll be able to start ordering pipe tobacco again. I mean, it's not, yes. that, not that I'm in desperate need of it. I have plenty, but that's not the point. There are plenty more out there that I need. Right. Well, the way that I always look at it is we never know what, uh, you know, when the uh, company might go under or yeah, absolutely. Uh, if uh, some BS law gets put through that uh, really hampers our hobby and then you're stuck with what you have. While it would certainly be okay uh, for a while, like, uh, it would be uh, kind of a miserable uh, experience watching everything slowly dwindle away. Oh yeah, so it's, I would, yeah, it is. It is. It is a bit uh, unnerving, but at the same time, if if you only smoke once or twice a week, you do have pipe tobacco to last you a long time. I mean, I haven't bought any pipe tobacco for a year. I'm not worried about this year. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things that I'm planning on doing is, um, so like the Codger blends, uh, you know, for, for those that don't know, the Codger, bl Codger blend is essentially like the blends that your grandfather smoked or uh, yeah, the, we're, the we're, common. We're talking Captain Black. We're talking uh, Prince Albert, uh, things like Carter that. Hall. Carter Hall. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, pipesandcigars.com, uh, they have a, uh, a special line of uh, match uh, codger blend uh, line, and I've always been interested in it. Uh, and they're like basically like kind of like blatant uh, copies of blends uh that were either current are currently in production or have gone away like uh you know, they have one um like chatham manor is for carter hall uh prince andrew is uh uh prince albert um uh what are some of the other ones uh they have a match for uh the blend walnut that I'm blanking on um, what the new name is, and as well as uh, Kentucky Club, Cherry Blend, and then one other one, maybe Sugar Barrel. But uh, I, I'm very interested in trying at least four of them. And they come in two different sizes. One is uh, your standard uh, uh, pouch, and then uh, the other one is uh, the big tub that the uh, Codger Blends are you know, famous for uh, coming in. And uh, I want to try the four different ones and see which one I like, and then uh, start picking up, uh, you know, maybe get, grab a couple tubs of uh, the one that I like as kind of like a, you know, a backup uh, to help, uh, you know, really keep my uh, stocks up. But, and really, yeah, like, uh, is that uh, your uh, supply of uh, uh, Bayou? No, 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 no. This, this is my supply of Bayou. Nice. 
as you can see, I've actually got it gotten it down below the wrapper that I took from uh, the tin, but uh, I still have plenty. There's still more than half of a pint jar there. Nice. But no, this, I brought this out because it's the other tobacco I got for tonight, just in case I go, you know, through this pipe, which I'm getting close to the end of it. Probably have to make up another one while we're talking, but that's not, not a problem. But this is a blend that you can get from smokingpipes.com. I always have problems pronouncing it because I think the word is French. And as one of the things we discussed in that episode that got, didn't get released because I didn't get the sound, if you'd have heard that episode, you'd know that I am very fluent in reading French and understanding French. Even maybe writing French, I could do a little bit. But speak it, I cannot. Anyway. It's Grand Coupier or something like that. Mm -hmm. It is a all sorts, you know, uh, um, graveyard jar, whatever, however you want to call it. Um, you where the where the last little dregs of your your tobaccos go until you get a full jar of tobacco out of it, right? Anyway, that's what this is, and it's very cheap. Last time I bought it, I haven't looked recently because well, I don't have any money. But last time I bought it, uh, you were able to get a pound for under twenty dollars American. So. Once you translate the shipping and uh, all that over, you can get a pound of tobacco. I could get, I got that pound of tobacco for about thirty to thirty-five dollars Canadian, depending on what the exchange rate was at the time. Mm -hmm. So, of course, you know, I I've, I've done that several times, so I have a lot of this kicking around. But I did it for the same reason you just mentioned. Yeah. Uh, just. Something cheap that I can, that I like that I can get a lot of real easily. Now it's a that's a smart thing to do because it's a, again like uh, when uh, McClellan uh, left us like that was that really caught me off guard. Uh, it was like right after. Um, International Pipe Smoking Day, so I was completely cleaned out of my pipe budget, and uh, I essentially had to watch uh, people on on social media kind of bragging about the uh, what they were able to stock up on. Oh no, I totally understand that. Um, because my birthday's in February, I typically save my Christmas money from Christmas to put with my birthday money for my birthday and international pipe smoking day sales usually gets my birthday and Christmas money. That's typically how that works. Um, so that year that budget was already spent. And since I do the budget, I was able to budget more tobacco money into, I, I didn't take from bills. Don't worry. I'm not, I'm not that kind of a person. All the bills are paid when I did this. There was going to be more than enough money. But I just told my wife when I got home, this is what I did and this is why. I'm never going to get it again. Because I can't. It, once it's gone, it's gone. And she just went, okay. So I'm lucky. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was, it was a hard one. Because um, McClellan wasn't a a company that I really had a whole lot of blends from. Of course, you know, I tried different versions of the Frogmorton, uh, like uh, uh, Across the Pond, uh, Normal, and uh, On the Bayou, which I really liked On the Bayou. I had ordered Cellar, but I didn't get a chance to uh, try it because I traded it uh, for something else. Uh, I think this was, yeah, before they went out. Um, but there were some, like, uh, I enjoyed their Sherlock Holmes uh, Honeydew Blend. 
and really I, I wish I could have tried all three of the blends the, the shag and Arcadia as well but uh, didn't get a chance to but I thought that was a neat little series um, and honeydew yeah like uh, it had that uh, infamous uh, McClellan ketchup aroma uh, but uh, for the tobacco but it was uh, quite good and thank but thankfully i was able to find a different honeydew blend that uh if i wanted uh to scratch that itch uh this was a, a suitable replacement that's um, good but another one uh that i really liked was uh uh gray havens uh which was this nice uh kind of aromatic uh pipe tobacco that i picked up uh from a store called Regals in uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana, and because uh, they had a nice uh, stock of McClellan blends there, I uh, wanted to try a Deep Hollow as well, but I, I never got around to that one. Deep Hollow, mm -hmm. I did. It was one of those things. You remember back when uh, we had uh, the Tin Society, where you could uh, get the subscription box and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I had, every once in a while, I'd get some extra money up, and I'd order a box, and then, you know, cancel the subscription and go back in, and, you know, I'd do it that way, because I'd I never had enough to keep it going, because I had to worry about exchange and all that every time I placed the order. Mm -hmm. But one of the boxes I got, one of the blends in it was Deep Hollow, and I, I liked it, and then my next regular tobacco order I ordered two tins. Right after I had ordered those two tins, McClellan went away. So I have one tin left. It's not cracked. Mm. Well, if we are able to meet up, I would love to. <laughs> if we, can, as figure, long as if we can figure it out, you, you, I'll bring that tin with me. We'll crack yeah, it open. I'll yeah, all I need to do is try it once. But yeah, it's a it's a sweet blend. It's a nice blend. Mm. But I've got a chest of tobacco on the floor behind me where I where I pulled some of the, some of this stuff out from tonight, and Deep Hollow is not in that chest. It's upstairs in the other chest that I have upstairs with the other half of my tobacco, which does not get touched until I'm through everything or quite a few blends anyway in this, t in this chest. Mm -hmm. And, and as, you, as yeah. you can tell, like given that I still have this little amount of frog Morton on the bayou, that I still got like three, two thirds of a jar of. It'll be a while before I get through that chest. Right. So I, I hope it's a treasure chest uh, looking kind of thing. Hold on. I'll get it. I'll just pick it up and show you. Bring it over. I'm sorry, people who are watching or uh, not watching, but listening, you're not going to see it. Hold on. No. I think that's close enough. Yeah, no, that uh, that qualifies it. Yeah, my wife found that for me. She thought it was a. She thought it was a smaller box. Like she, so I was looking for something to keep my rings and uh, a few things in on my on my bed stand, bedside table, and we did eventually get something for that. But she got this online somewhere, and she thought it was smaller than that. And I said, "Oh, don't worry about it. I can still use this." It's now my tobacco <laughs> treasure chest. It's awesome.
Now I need uh now I just have boring Tupperware. I'd love to get like, that's the uh, one that's upstairs for me. It's a boring Tupperware container with jars in yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, it would be cool to have like one of those like old fashioned like luggage kind of like trunks. I had one of those too. That's actually what that was meant to replace. Hmm. Uh oh. That's not good. Uh oh. Ooh. I'd have to glue that back in. Uh, yeah, I was just gonna say that's an easy fix. Like I I I fix these all the time. I think I've fixed this one before. I've got the glue and stuff. Just have to uh let that cool down and Put it over on the repair bench and fix it up. Right, right. But, yeah. It's an English night here tonight. Hmm. This particular jar that I'm working out of was one of the last ones I filled. I know because I got all the little sawdusty like bits in there. Nice. Uh. Uh, I, uh, another McClellan, McClellan blend that I remember picking up, uh, I bought a, uh, I think probably two ounces bulk of, uh, McClellan, uh, five, five, 100. Oh, 5,100. Uh, yeah. Which is, was their, uh... The red cake. Uh, very, yeah, the red cake, which uh, everyone raved about. And uh, I thought it was good, but I never, uh... Like, it didn't stick with me enough for me to buy more of it. But, uh... uh you know, it, it was, uh... If you like Virginia's, uh... That was a, uh... That was a good blend. Yeah, I didn't get any of that. Um, one of the ones that I did order was one of their Perique blends, or Virginia Perique's, the uh, 2015 bulk uh. blend. I think I'm gonna have to get one of those tea strainers out and uh, see if I can, you know, get some of the sawdusty stuff out of here, like the really min <laughs> minuscule bits of tobacco that you know you can't really smoke because they're right, just right. too small. Yeah, makes it a, a little too uh, too difficult. Because I know there's plenty of good, you know, good leaf in there still. It's just. Mm -hmm. There's lots of dust. Just, right. Yeah, it's a bulk blend. Like, what, what do you expect? Like, all that stuff settles to the bottom of the bag, and this jar mm -hmm. came from the bottom of the bag. Yeah. It's a little uh, difficult. Uh is that uh which blend is that the that, grand that, uh that's the grand coupier or cooper yeah. or blah, 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 the yeah it's it's this one <laughs> yeah uh yeah that's what i was thinking And 
another problem with all, <clears throat> with all those little sawdust things in there is they get down there a little too tight, ruin the airflow. Yeah. And then suddenly uh, <clears throat> co- come up through uh, the stem, which is uh, always a wonderful uh, Well, that's a great experience. experience. Hot embers trying to go down your throat. Mm-hmm. That's not what happened there, and it's just hot air, but still. Right, right. Yeah, still, still annoying. But anyway, I think we shall call it here for the night. Yeah. Which, uh, before we uh, wrap up, uh, really quick, uh, while we're talking about the social media stuff, I've started a new project on Twitter because I wanted to do something that uh, was like completely 100% pipe focused. Uh, I started a. Uh, Twitter account called uh, of pipes and men and it is completely uh each day I'm posting a picture you know you usually historical picture but uh you know I'm not opposed to doing anything you know more recent too but just pictures of people uh enjoying their pipes nice and uh you know if I can mm-hmm. give a little bit of a description um but uh not uh, but but ultimately, like I just wanted to do it uh, in such a way that it could be something that because uh, I know there are people that like I'll, I'll chat with on, on Twitter and stuff that don't follow me probably because of uh, my uh, political takes sometimes and whatnot. And so, and I, I get that. Like I, you know, I I understand. There's people that uh, I d- either mute or don't follow for the same reason, but. At the at the end of the day, like I don't want to completely shut people out and not, uh, you know, I wanted to do something that anyone that smokes a pipe, you know, mm-hmm. regardless of their uh, backgrounds, beliefs, or whatever, could follow and uh, enjoy, and uh, just and have it be completely focused on the hobby. Uh, so uh, at the same token, like I've uh, that account only follows uh, my Twitter account and the Briar Report, not because I don't want to follow anybody, but that's if people like uh, reply to it, I will reply to them through the through it and everything. I, I'm not being unfriendly or anything, but uh, you know, it's not the purpose uh, of it. It's more just uh, you know, it's kind of like those. Uh, there's certain Twitter accounts where they'll like post like things that happen, like uh, uh, this is what happened in history. Uh, like um, one account that I followed was uh, uh, I stopped when it ended was uh, World War II in real time. And I followed that for a couple of years as it went through uh, uh, World War II, and uh, so those so those are fun kind of accounts. And I figured I'd start one up of my own that uh, was completely pipe focused. And nice. uh, and so far, I'm pretty happy with it. Like uh, I started this week, and I'm already up to like forty uh, some followers. Uh, uh, that's a pretty pretty speedy uh, kind of. Uh, deal and uh, already i can tell people are uh, you know some people i've chatted with in the past that don't follow me are, are following that and so that's uh you know that's the goal so uh uh so far I'm, I'm very happy with uh my decision to do that so if you uh, again if you want to follow that and uh, uh see some cool vintage pipe smoking pictures follow of pipes and men on twitter I don't think you have to capitalize any of that, and it's all just uh, one word. Okay. And you can get me at the usual places, Twitter, Dr. Alien. You'll find everything that goes there except for this. This is over at Syndicated Pipe, the show's <laughs> Twitter handle. And all, you, you can always uh, catch the show on the show's own website at syndicatedpipeclub.wordpress.com. And with all that being said, all the links are in the never receiving email email are all, you know, in the show notes. Did you want to quickly plug, um, I, I know you mentioned it before, but plug uh, Star Wars TV talk. That's in the show notes too. Okay. 
My my link tree link has all of my stuff on it, including Star Wars TV Talk. So you can get to that too if you want to do Star yeah. Wars TV Talk. Just follow my link. You'll you'll find it. And uh, you're going through the Book of Boba Fett with that, right? Yes, we're going right through now? the Mandal- the Mandalorian Chronicles right now. Mm-hmm. I've changed the oh. name in my own head canon for reasons. Yeah, <laughs> if, if you're watching the show, you know the reasons. <laughs> Well, with that said, uh, you know, uh, fun episode. and Absolutely. I'm glad we were able to do more of a pipe-focused one oh, with this one. Yeah. It's always fun to just talk about pipes and tobacco. Absolutely. But with that, we will leave you with this. We wish you good smokes, great entertainment, and we will see you next week. Chat with you later.